Hey, and welcome back to another Magical Vox tutorial. In this one, we will cover shaders that I use. It is important to mention, however, I will not cover all the shaders that are listed in my folder, which I will leave in the description below. This is because I want you guys to mess around and experiment with the different types of shaders that are available to use. And lastly, these shaders are not mine. I did not create them. With all that said, let's go ahead and get started. I'm just gonna first delete this cube. And let's say you want to create some wood flooring. You would just create a new palette and select some color you want your flooring to be. I'm gonna create a gradient here. Um, where one will be a darker color and the other will be a lighter color. And for greater detail on how to create gradients, check out the hotkey tutorial I created. But basically you want to create two colors on the opposite ends. Um, have one color selected and while pressing, pressing and hold control alt at the same time and left mouse dragging to the other color will create gradient. Um, if I hover over the colors at the bottom, there should be a index number associated with it. So in this case, um, this is 241 and it goes to 248. Depending on where you put your color in the palette, um, the number will change. So remember that, go over to your shaders tab, find bricks and we're going to go ahead and go to voxel shader mode, attach, and just drag it out. Right now it's just gray because the colors are not, um, the colors are selecting like down here, which is all gray. I want it up here. So this is 241, 248. So over here where it says color A, put the first number, 241, and the second number, 248. You can see. We now have what almost it looks like wood. We can mess with these settings a little bit more. Change the width and the height and depth. Direction you can change depending on where you want the wood to face. And now that that's selected, you can always change these number of uh, colors to whatever you'd like if it doesn't look right. And uh, there you go, you have wood, really quick wood f flooring. Next on our list, we'll create some arches. Let's go in voxel shader mode and drag it out. You can see we have, the title says arches and pillars. You don't have to create arches if you don't want to. In fact, if I drag this down, um, actually, maybe make it a larger scale. If you drag it out, you get this really cool textured look and combine it with the floor tool. If you drag it, you get something that looks really cool that you can probably add to walls or surfaces. Also this arches and pillars uh, shader is real, the detail is gets better with the object size so a larger object will create better detail versus if you create a smaller one. It's important to mention that you can always just hit play on the shader here but um, the sh if the shader um, forms objects like this, it will just fill the whole um, object with the shader and you won't get the flexibility in voxel shader mode to actually um, draw per se your um, the shader. So for instance I was able to create this using voxel shader mode but if I hit shader you can see a lot less versatility. Now 
Moving to the next shader, we have Kryptonite, which when I hit play, creates this moon-like Mars texture that kind of resembles a sponge. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete this. Basically, um, if I do this, I'm able to change these settings and see a real-time representation of those settings in action. So if I change, for instance, the scale, you can see I'm getting a real-time uh, it's affecting the object real time. I'm going to go ahead and mess around with this. Change the size. Uh, decrease density. Increase the FM scale for randomness. Of course, there's a randomness here down here, down here for like, it's basically the seed. And crystallization like like that. And go ahead and give it a color. Go to render. Turn on these settings here, the ones I have. And in the materials section or in matter section, want to give it a cloud shader or a cloud material on I me. Mean. Let's get rid of the edges. And it creates really quick maybe not realistic clouds but it imitates clouds and this is what I use the kryptonite shader for it's very fast for creating clouds like this moving on next we have the mandel bulb shader which you've seen me use if you watch previous videos um, I use it for clouds and explosions hitting play fills the space with this mushroom like uh, object and it's pretty self-explanatory it basically creates um, an object like this depending on whatever size and it will um, scale to whatever size you have it. So for instance, I in voxel shader mode, this small object uh, might only be 40 by 40 voxels wide versus something like this. And you, I basically just use these and duplicate it, rotating it as such and like combining it together to get this cool what, smoke explosion effect. As you can see with um, this one color was associated with the cloud material and you have this cool looking cloud smoke effect. And that's what I use the mandible shader for. Next we have the nature and shader which allows you to create randomly generated terrain relatively quickly, albeit on a small scale. Um, like the kryptonite shader, there's a bunch of settings you can change here. You can change the seed. Um, you can change the sea level. The terrain level, you make it higher or lower. And the scale of it, of course. And moving on to X and Y. Moving on next, we have tiles, which I would use palette zero for an easier explanation of this. If I draw this out, you can see very closely there are yellow and white tiles, and I can always change the colors. Right here, this is the color color A, so that might be this one, index one. So if I change this, see I'm changing the color here, but I want to do this in real time, so I'm actually gonna create that again in shader mode, draw it, draw it out, change this color to say 238 which is the mid blue, and color B I want dark, so 253, you can change the width of the tiles, and even the depth. And actually, if I make this white, you can see I quickly create flooring for a kitchen scene. Moving on, we have weave, which um, can be used for walls or even flooring. For instance, um, if I go and create a new palette or some wood,
going over to voxel shader mode and attach, draw it out. It's gray because the colors are associated with these colors on the palette and it's all gray. Find right here, 241 to 246. You can see I have um, it selected those colors and put it here. And I can always change the look of them by just adjusting this palette here. And with that, I created some cool looking wood tiles for, say, like a sidewalk or something. Of course, we also have zigzag, which is pretty self-explanatory. It just creates a zigzag sort of pattern using the colors associated on your palette. Very similar to tiles and weave. Also, can make donuts, um, which the shader is torus. You draw it out, and it creates a ring. Looks kind of like an onion ring, actually. Um, you can increase the size of the radius to make it more donut-like. And what that means, it's basically the radius is between here and here, I believe. And it's just 37, or the number here is just how many voxels walks, wide this area is. Lastly, opening the brush ta tab, we go to grass, which can go ahead and create really quick grass here. I'm just going to go ahead and make a palette for my grass. Uh, draw it out. You can see it creates some gray spikes. Remember, remember, memorizing these colors, 241, 248, I can put the colors here, the color in color B, and it will sample the colors between the color index 241 and 248 to create something like this. And this, in my opinion, is the most realistic form of grass. You can change the mode to whatever you want it to look like. For instance, so like this one, see, it's darker down here and it gets lighter as you go to the top. And you can see grass is created relatively easy using the grass shader. And you don't have to make it that dense if you don't want to. If I draw it back out again. Whoops. You can change the density of it. So you can make it really dense if you wanted to, or reduce the density by increasing the value. And of course, change the seed. And the growth adjusts the height. I think the growth, um, the higher you go up, the more they are the same height, but the lower it goes, the more um, variation there are in the height. That concludes the Magical Voxel Shader tutorial. Hopefully this video has helped. If not, please leave your questions in the comments below, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care.